Hello and welcome to yet another edition of the Full Force News Burst brought to you by Generals Joe's Reborn.com with me as your host Chris Lead What the Actual f- is Going On the Cloud aka Diagnostic 80. Joining me today to talk about the news that Ever Vigilant is possibly back in play as well as a scam regarding casting is Justin Assistant What the Actual f- is Going On Bell. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this news burst. Over the weekend, news emerged from The Hollywood Reporter that appeared to dredge up what we were already aware of when we discussed the return of Ever Vigilant a number of weeks back. Yes, the ridiculous Josh Applebaum and Andre Nemec script details that popped up on the internet explaining the crazy plot between Chuckles and the Crimson Twins, as well as many other fringe characters, was actually in development and referred to the months old article from before. The news received mixed responses, including confusion due to the apparent turnaround yet again after Snake Eyes seemed to be back on. Official confirmation hasn't been given as yet, so we are operating blind currently, and on top of that, we got a follow-up story that seemed to highlight a casting call from Alan Baltes for the G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant film. Information has emerged recently, however, that points to this as a scam. Honestly, I have no idea which way is up currently. In any case, the Hollywood Reporter article seems to imply that Snake Eyes is still in production and that this Chuckles-based Ever Vigilant or Untitled movie is being developed alongside. Lots to get through here, Justin. Firstly, looks like we have two Joe movies on the cards now. What are your thoughts on this Ever Vigilant plan being back on? Uh, completely insane, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't. here's the thing. If I thought... I mean, obviously, you know, stuff with like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, all that stuff and and Transformers to a degree sometimes have two films, you know, in production simultaneously. If I had any confidence that they could do that here, then I'd probably be a little bit more optimistic. But it just continues to feel like they're just throwing stuff at the wall. Yeah. Especially if this truly is, you know, the ever vigilant script that we've heard some, you know, nuggets of before. Yeah. Then that just makes it even more bizarre. It felt when, when the actual story dropped... Um, like I was on the road at the time, so I didn't actually, I didn't actually know what was going on. And I've got, you mm-hmm. know, again, the phone blows up, and it's like messages all over the place, and and I'm kind of like, guys, guys, we we literally reported on this a few weeks back, like about right. Ever Vigilant being, you know, back as a as an option. Um, exactly. But it was, it, it seemed to be kind of coexisting with Snake Eyes at that point. I'm oh, sorry, it wasn't coexisting with Snake Eyes at that point. It seemed to be at odds with Snake Eyes at that point. Like they were going back and forth as to whether it was going to be Snake Eyes or Ever Vigilant. And with Snake Eyes actually seems seemingly on in production with principal photography and all that kind of stuff going ahead, dates and all that kind of stuff. So it was very yep. confusing when this news dropped. I just thought they'd seen the old a- the article, which they had referred to in that Hollywood Reporter article, and I thought, well, surely, surely they're just they've found this this story and they're just playing off it like it it felt right. to me very much like people that didn't know how didn't have the backstory of what's been going on for the past you know yeah year they, or they so. heard something or found a nugget somewhere and thought it was current when really it wasn't but it appears that this is actually legit information so i mean from what we've been able to kind of ascertain this actual story is a legitimate exclusive for the hollywood explorer uh, hollywood explorer the it might as well be <laughs> the hollywood reporter so I'm not going to argue the, the the toss on that. We'll just we'll just you know assume that this is brand new information and that it you know and and I mean we've discussed the in development and I'm using air quotes as I say that kind of process mm-hmm. before and that could mean all sorts of things, couldn't it? It could mean that they may be going over the script again, couldn't they? Oh sure, yeah. I mean there's all sorts of different things that they could you know that that quote unquote in production could really mean. So yeah, I mean they they could be at any any sort of level of of filmmaking right now, whether it's, you know, concept art, you know, script writing, whatever, script doctoring. Yeah. But I mean of course, you know, the the weird thing about the Hollywood Reporter article is that there really isn't any new information in it. It's all they're talking yeah. about Applebaum and Nemec who are script writers we heard about over a year ago. Yeah. You know, they're they're talking about Chuckles, which is something we heard about over a year ago. Yeah. So I mean you you look at this article and you're like, okay, so this is an exclusive for the Hollywood Reporter, so it's an exclusive in that, you know, it's information that was on, you know, this hashtag show in <laughs> yeah. May of 2018 or something. Yeah. So what really, can, I don't... Yeah, I, I, th- th- I mean, what what it's, it appears to me that the exclusive they have is that it's just in development. But again, right. I'm pretty sure you could have said that about this particular story mm-hmm. a few weeks ago when we discussed this very, very right. thing about Ever Vigilant being back on as, a, as an option. So yeah. 
I, I don't know. It just I, I I never really know which way is up with this, and then when the internet gets hold of it. And I've kind of feel like you know has anyone actually been listening to any of our news bursts? Because I feel like we've been discussing this for weeks. <laughs> well, we've we just been... recorded about Ever Vigilant like two weeks ago it's, or three weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. I mean. So I mean, I, it's funny how everyone kind of jumps on it and is like, "Oh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be rubbish. It's going to be this. It's going to be that." It's like we don't even know what it is yet. I mean, right. we, we know of the script details, or do we? We know of you know like is is that actually legitimate information? It, but it, mm-hmm. I don't know if it appears so or if it's just. A story that just keeps getting dredged up every now and again. Um, in right. any in any case, as, as if we're kind of looking at this from the perspective of this is legitimate, this movie is in development alongside Snake Eyes. I mm-hmm. think personally, if this is done right, Chuckles could be actually an inspired focal point for this film. I mean, what's mm-hmm. what's your stance on using him and the other fringe characters for this particular ensemble movie? Oh, I love I, I like the idea. I mean, Chuckles is one of those characters that is. You know, to the general public is obscure, but to the diehard G.I. Joe fan, it's a pretty important oh, kind yeah. of pivotal character. So I think he's one of those those great ones that works as kind of a focal point for the for this film. And I think one of the most interesting things that kind of spun out of this whole, you know, fake casting news information Ooh, was a we'll little that, you know, yeah. blip on Twitter. And <laughs> you know, I, I won't spoil it, and we'll talk about it. I'm kidding. No, no, later. no, but, no um, you're right. No, it's fine. To but talk there about was it. some interesting stuff that did come out of this whole conversation. But yeah, I do think, especially with the IDW comic series the cobra comic series which really focused on him as an undercover agent um in the midst of of cobra i think is really a fascinating twist on the character but you know credit also has to go all the way back to brandon jerwa in the devil's due days who actually featured him in a pretty yeah pretty cool storyline within the jojo comic as well so certainly over the past decade or so chuckles has been getting some attention at least among the fan the fandom yeah and um you know deserves i think a little bit of time in the in the sun for the rest of the rest of the world as well i also kind of feel he he deserves a bit more respect i've been cringing at reading some of these like you know quote unquote frigging legitimate articles about you know that that spin off the hollywood reporter and it's every single one seems to get the information in some way shape or form completely incorrect and that's that's something that's really bothered me like reading this stuff it's like can we get so you know if you're actually going to be reporting on these things I feel like a bit more research has to go into it. You know, like I'm we're not just coming out, you know, we we come out here and we speculate on this stuff, but we make sure we're talking about things that we know, like deep down we know about this, you know, we know about the the ins and outs of it. And when I read some of these articles, I'm like, oh god, it's like it's like it's been written by like I don't know, somebody's nan who's never actually seen a GI right. Joe figure in their life. It's like what it's it's almost like it almost makes me it reminds me of like, you know, when when um a parent is trying to be cool in front of their yeah. kids. You know, that's what it feels like when I read some of these articles. It's like oh, for God's oh, yeah. sake, get your facts straight. Anyway, before that's yeah. my rant over on <laughs> articles I keep reading about. I mean, we're talking now in in development. Do you expect, I mean, I personally hope so, but do we expect rewrites for this script and, and from the details we've heard i mean time travel and this like antimatter weapon of mass destruction thing there's still i mean there's, there's still kind of i don't know bits and pieces of that kind of script floating around in some of these articles which is bothering me but i mean what what do you think do you think there's going to be rewrites here if there is you know honestly i'm i'm really wondering if they're going to be that major i mean mm. you know if these two scriptwriters are still involved, as these more recent articles seem to dictate, I don't see why they would completely overhaul the script. And I and I know people, and I've said this on the podcast before, people time and time again will say, you know, oh, you know, script rumors are just rumors. You know, things always change for the film. Yeah. And then you then you go back to, to G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra that had elements of this script that have been floating around for five or ten years about Cobra Commander being named Rex and being, yeah. you know, related to Baroness and Duke and all this stuff and people thinking how awful it was. Oh, and that's an early draft of the script. Certainly they'll change that before the film comes out. And then sure enough, you know, ten years later when the movie finally is released, you know, G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra, in fact, featured elements of that script that everybody yeah. was saying is too ridiculous to be an actual Hollywood film. So, you know, I can sit here and say that, yeah, they really should write that out. But I mean, look look at the way Hollywood works. I mean, Hollywood is really a, you know, copycat industry. You know, yeah. they look at what's popular and what's, you know, what's earning money. You're about to say Endgame, aren't you? That. You're about to say yeah, Endgame, I mean, aren't you? 
you look at Avengers Endgame, the biggest movie in cinema history now revolving around time travel. Do you think they're really going to see that and then say, oh, we better take time travel out of our movie? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, well, in in that case, I do hope it's done in a certain way that is, yeah. I don't know, just entertaining then at least, you know. I mean, I would prefer, believe me, I'd prefer they take it out. I mean, I, to be honest, the, the, the time travel aspect of Endgame was, you know, they, they pulled it off in a way that, that I was n- nicely surprised about. But yeah. I was I was desperately hoping between Infinity War and Endgame that they wouldn't pull that rug because in my opinion, time travel is the was biggest the... kind of laziest yeah. sort of excuse to, to fix. Yeah. You know, a, as a writer, especially, you work really hard to try to put your characters in situations that you have that, you know, are challenging to stakes. get out of and to just exactly. kind of, yeah. yeah, stakes. And if you can just, you know, fall back on time travel every time, then what's the point? I mean, yeah. you can just... You know, you can fix anything you want. Now, like I said, Endgame did it very well and did it, you know, in a more interesting fashion. But, you know, still, time travel is time travel and it just feels kind of lazy. And, um, you know, so I don't know. I I hope they don't rely on that trope. But, you know, I don't have any reason to believe that they're going to take it out. True. No, that's fair enough. I, I, I can see your point very clearly there on that one. Let's move into this casting call scam thing then, because that that was quite interesting. That popped up pretty soon after the news of um, you know Ever Vigilant being back on as an idea came in. The casting call story. I mean, it's really bizarre. Alan Baltes or Bolts or Baltese or I don't know how you pronounce that. He's had previous with similar scams in the past. Yet here we are talking about this tweet as if it's really serious. This is what the post says exactly. Paramount Pictures looking for newcomers to play lead and supporting roles in G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant. The upcoming production of the Paramount Pictures military science fiction action film G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant is currently setting up open auditions for new talent to play the lead and supporting roles. Included in the film will be a new team of Joes, Dana Janak, Dr. Adele Burkhart, Wild Bill, Barbecue, General Flag, Doc and Keel Hall. The main antagonist will be Tomax and Zaymot, also being cast as the Crimson Twins. Right, okay, so straight away I, I kind of feel that, uh, okay, whatever. G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant centers on the G.I. Joe force being reinstated for a confrontation when the, G- the Cobra terrorists acquire a deadly new weapon. G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant is scheduled to be released in theaters on March 27, 2020. Wrong. Anyone yeah, who is able to perform in a self-made audition video from scenes provided by the casting director are welcome to sign up for the G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant auditions. The sign-up fee is a one-time talent fee of 99 bucks. After the sign-up fee is submitted, I know, I'm like, what? Talent will be sent an email to respond with their uh, photos and general information. Current cell phone photos are preferred. Da-da-da-da-da, whoa, bull, bull, bull. You know the rest, I'm not gonna read it all out. Justin, mate, what do you think of that? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's total BS. I mean, apparently what's going on is that this Alan Baltas guy probably takes you know, he probably combs through news reports and sees what the latest film that's getting a lot of hits is or something like that. In this case, it's G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant because the Hollywood Reporter has brought that back to the surface. So yeah. he combs through some of those articles, takes some of the characters embedded in those articles, and then throws it up on this de facto website and then tells people, oh, just send me 99 bucks and I'll include you in a casting call. And, you know, then that never happens and, and yada, yada. And apparently, you know, if you if you uh check out online, you know, he's got a whole subreddit going on about how he's a, a crook, basically, and a criminal, and he swindled a bunch of people out of money, so it's obviously, it's it's not something you should try to do, and not something you should believe. Um, it's just, seems to me, just a bunch of fabrication. I'm not, you know, saying, I'm, I'm not holding back on this one, because this is this is utter garbage, in my opinion. Right. If, if you're doing this kind of bull <laughs> to scam people, then you're a <laughs> piece of shit and yeah. that, that's that's it end of so i think like you know i just want people to be involved like aware that this is absolute garbage don't like be waiting now for some sort of like explanation as to whether this is or not if this is legit which i it's not trust me then you know I'll, I'll put my hand up and i'll apologize but in this particular instance no way in hell is this real so just ignore this crap because i mean there's so much information in there that has just been literally ripped exactly. off the previous articles as justin mentioned the the date march 27 2020 is an old date so obviously he's messed up there there's no, i mean there's no way in hell if that was a, a legitimate audition a legit a legitimate situation you know you wouldn't be looking at that that particular date at all um we all know that snake eyes is in october of that year 
And that's a push. Yeah. That's a push because that isn't even going yet. So right. yeah. So keep your eyes out on that crap. I mean, so overall, from what from what I can gather, Justin, and uh, and and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but at the moment we've got a project by Paramount and Hasbro starting to, starting development in in this ever not it's not necessarily ever vigilant. It's been it's been called Untitled so far. Right. So it's it's obviously information from the ever vigilant script but that might not be the title so don't be too worried about that snake eyes is still on and this alan baltes guy casting call thing is absolute bull and a scam yeah is that about right yeah that sounds about right <laughs> okay my goodness it's, ugh, it's been ridiculous <laughs> That, I know that was um, something you noticed on Twitter the other day, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, well, one thing that's, that was kind of cool about this news kind of bubbling back to the surface is uh, it started a little t- Twitter thread, very small, a guy named Jay Farber, who is a TV writer and a producer who writes, I guess, for Supergirl and a series called Zoo. He tweeted, you know, the Hollywood Reporter News and said um, that he had the pleasure of working for Josh Applebaum and Andre Nemec for, se- for three seasons on the Zoo series he's, he works for. and just says they're the best and this kind of material is right up their alley. Awesome. Which is good. And then um, Christos Gage, who everybody knows is one of the writers, along with Mike Costa on that uh, IDW Cobra series that featured Chuckle so heavily, um, res- responded to that and uh, basically said, tell them if they like Chuckles, then check out that Cobra series. It's the blueprint for an edgy cable TV Joe series. All the cool people like it, <laughs> which is a neat thing for him to say. He's obviously yeah. still invested in that. And anybody who isn't aware Christos Gage has kind of exploded since then. You know, he's a, he wrote on the Daredevil Netflix series. He's the writer of that Spider-Man video game for the PS4 that yeah. has been so huge, you know, Buffy comics and Minus Spider-Man success. comics and Hawaii Five-O. And yeah, so he's, he's um, basically become a pretty big name since his time on G.I. Joe Cobra. But um, anyway, a gentleman named Jeff Talk uh, replies to Christos on that on this thread and says that they actually pitched them this three years ago, which makes it sound sound like he uh, and he's uh, he's involved with Netflix. I guess he's he's written some Netflix series and stuff like that. And it sounds like he or or whoever the we is pitched uh, Hasbro the idea of of adapting the IDW Cobra Chuckles series. It sounds like three years ago, and obviously, you know, I don't know what format that was in or whatever. And obviously, Hasbro neglected to uh, take them up on it as you know as they are wont to do with any good idea they hear. Um, yeah, let's not do an edgy chuckles Netflix series. Let's do time travel instead. <laughs> so I, I just thought that was kind of an interesting exchange because it, uh, it really does, you know, kind of, it, it adds a little bit more, you know, optimism maybe if, if there are people in Hollywood who think that those script writers might have a, a good mm-hmm. eye for this sort of stuff. I yeah. mean, I, I don't remain convinced until I'm actually sitting in the theaters watching it, but you know, who knows, you know, it, it's, you know, some interesting stuff in, in the world of social media. There's so much that kind of bums you out, but seeing stuff like that is actually kind of cool. Some insight into what goes on behind the scenes, some of the things you never, ever hear about, but, yeah. you know, professionals on Twitter are talking about, you can kind of eavesdrop on that a little bit, which was neat. Awesome. And it's it's crazy the amount of pitches that get kind of put to people and are just kind of, yeah. you know, shot down. Uh, in, not just in, like, you know, on TV and the film aspect, but, like, you know, IDW series and, and all that kind of all that kind of jazz. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, Justin, thanks for jumping on and kind of helping sure. me unravel this weekend's most ridiculous amount of news ever and again like let's get i mean i don't know just it's just all over the place isn't it i I mean i'd like to be able to get snake eyes in a good place before we start talking about more spin-off movies do you know what i mean well yeah i mean that's just that's the the gist i get from this whole series of events it isn't that oh hasbro has so much faith in gi joe they're producing multiple films it sounds seems more like they have no idea what's going to work, so they're just going to throw everything and see what happens first sort of thing. Yeah, you know? like I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's, see the response, see what how people react to it. And, it's kind of yeah. unfortunate, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, Justin, thanks for jumping on. Really appreciate it, buddy. Sure. Thanks. Not a problem. My pleasure. No worries. That's it for this installment of the Full Force News Burst. Thank you to my awesome co-host, Justin Bell. See you next time. And as always, for f***'s sake, sort your f***ed out, Full Force. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the most swear words in an episode ever, I think. <laughs> Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback or questions. We have also started a Patreon page so if you want to see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content 
then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force